today we're going to be talking about how to use triple integrals to find the average value of a function. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to find the average value of the function f of x, y, z equal to x, y, z, which lies over the top of a cube with side length l. The cube is lying in the first octant of our three-dimensional coordinate system, and it has one vertex at the origin, or the point 0, 0, 0, and three of its sides lie along the coordinate axes. So before we get started, let's just draw briefly a picture of what we're talking about here. If we call this our x, y, z coordinate system, x, y, and z, the cube we're talking about has one vertex or one corner at the origin, so there's one corner of it, and then it has three sides which lie along the coordinate axis. So here's one side x, one side y, and one side along the z axis, and if we just draw our cube transparently like this, what we find is a picture of the cube with the vertex at the origin and three sides along the coordinate axis. So that's the cube we're talking about. We've got a function x, y, z, which is hovering above this, and we want to find the average value of this function. Well, we've got our formula for the average value when we're dealing with triple integrals. All we really need to do is plug in the information that we have. So first of all, we've got our average value function this looks similar to the average value function when we were just dealing with two variables. Instead of 1 over b minus a out in front, we've got 1 over this function here, volume of the solid e. Well, we just have 1 over, what's the volume of this q? Well, we've been told that the side length is l, right? The side length of each of these sides here is l. So the volume is length times width times height. Well, that's just l cubed. So our volume is l cubed. If we take our triple integral like this, this is going to be the triple integral over the solid E. Well, we just need our limits of integration. We know that our limits of integration for x are going to start here at 0 and go all the way out to this point x equals L because the side length is L. Same thing for y. We're going to start at 0 and go to y equals L. And same thing for z. We're going to start at 0 and go to z equals L. So our limits of integration are going to be 0 to L for each of our three variables. Then we take our function, which is x, y, z. We plug it in for f of x, y, z. So we get x, y, z here. And now we just need our order of integration. Because we have the same limits of integration for each of our variables, we're always integrating from 0 to L. It doesn't matter in which order we integrate the variables, so we can just say here dx, dy, dz. And now we've got our triple integral set up to find the average value of x, y, z over this cube. Now it's just a matter of evaluating the integral. So we're going to evaluate first with respect to x. We'll leave this 1 over l cubed out in front here, 0, 0 to l, l. Integrating with respect to x, we're going to get 1 half x squared y, z. Remember when we integrate with respect to x, we treat y and z as constants. Now we're going to be evaluating on the interval x equals 0 to x equals L. We leave dy and dz out here for later. We need to evaluate on the interval x equals 0 to x equals L. So what we'll do first is plug in L for x, and we'll get 1 half L squared instead of x squared here, so L squared y, z. Then we subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0 for x, but of course that's just going to give us 0. No need to write a minus 0 here, so we just leave it like that, and we say dy dz. Now we can integrate with respect to y, so we'll say 1 over l cubed times the integral from 0 to l. Here's where we integrate with respect to y. We'll get 1 fourth l squared y squared z, and then we're going to be evaluating that on the interval y equals 0 to y equals l, and we leave dz out here for later. So just to recap here, when we were integrating with respect to y, we treat all of the other variables as constants. l is already a constant, and we're treating z as a constant. So 1 half l squared z is really just a constant coefficient on this y variable here. If we integrate just the y variable, we'd get 1 half y squared. So we have this y squared here. We just pulled that 1 half out in front, multiplying it by the 1 half that was already there to get 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. So that's where the 1 half went. Everything else stays the same. 
So now plugging in L for Y, we'll get one over L cubed times the integral from zero to L. Here we'll get L squared times L squared again, or just L to the fourth. So one fourth L to the four times Z. Then we subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero for Y, but of course that'll just be zero. No need to write out a minus zero, so we just add the DZ. Now we integrate with respect to Z and we'll get one over L cubed multiplied here. When we integrate with respect to z, we'll treat l as a constant as always. We're going to get 1 half z squared here for the integral of z. Pulling that 1 half out in front, we get 1 half times 1 fourth, which is 1 eighth. So 1 eighth l to the fourth times z squared. And we evaluate that on the interval, z equals 0 to z equals l. If we evaluate here, we'll get 1 over l cubed multiplied by 1 8th l to the fourth times l squared now will give us l to the sixth no need to plug in z equals zero because we'll just get zero for this term so when we multiply one over l cubed by l to the sixth over eight we'll get l cubed to cancel our six will cancel here we'll just be left with l cubed in our numerator and so the final answer then is l cubed over eight that is the average value of the function x y z over the cube here that we've described as the solid E.